Some of you are reaching out to me asking for help on this topic and to be honest that sparked my curiosity because it's been a while since I tried it for the last time. So <laughs> I had to try it again and it was fun. If you are already familiar with Obsidian, please use the chapters below to jump to the step by step. However, if you're just starting up, please bear with me for a moment because there are some crucial details you have to know before starting to move your notes. When you add images and other files to an Evernote note, you see them all in the note. The final result on Obsidian is the same. You see the text and the files in the note. However, on Obsidian, those images, PDFs, and other files, they are not actually stored in that node. They need a separate folder. The system creates that when you drag an image, but they are always in that separate folder. So keep that in mind for the moment. You soon understand why this is unimportant information. Obsidian notes can have extra information on what it's called the front matter. Uh, think of it as metadata, for example, you can have tags, you can have the note creation date, the date that note was edited, and to be honest, whatever you want, you can create those fields. You can easily identify the front matter by two lines of three minus signs together. So you have one in the top and one in the bottom. And you can also choose to view or not the front matter, go into settings and then the editor tab and there you'll find the option to show or hide the front matter on your notes. Last point of attention are some characters that may cause synchronization problems. To be honest, I have no idea why this happens, but some of them are preventing notes from being synchronized with my Android. And that's why I strongly recommend you creating a test notebook to test different settings before committing to convert hundreds of notes. Here's an example. Uh, I could never in my tests make a good conversion of web clipper notes. They, they never look good. <laughs> you soon see that there is even an option on your all, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, to prevent uh, web clipper notes to be converted. So let's take a look at it. So here's what I'm suggesting you to do. Create a tests notebook. This one has a note with some formatting. We have links and bold audio and even a task. This one has a code block and this one has an image. So now let's export this. Click here, export notebook. Make sure all these options are selected and that you're using the Evernote format. Export it, choose a place, and save. Here at YAL, I hope that's the correct way to pronounce it. <laughs> you find this first page with some explanation. Let's go to the next one. And here we'll select the notebook we just exported from Evernote. It is here, next. This is a very important step. Here's where we'll set how the notes will be translated to the Obsidian format. I'm not gonna pretend I understand all these options because I don't. What I wanna show you here today is what I came up with to make an Obsidian folder look and act as similar as possible to an Evernote notebook. This is divided in some blocks. The first one is to choose the format, Obsidian, of course. And here you can see that Convert Web Clipper is already set as no. I'll let it like that. Not gonna change anything else here. Keep images size, yes. Uh, Obsidian will create markdown files. The text files will end with .md. And to make 
the Evernote links work, you have to add the .md to the links. So this is what this does. Down here, there are some options for the folder structure and the tags. So first thing I'm going to choose here, yes, store all my attachments in one folder. If you don't do this, uh, you all <laughs> will create several subfolders and I think this is a cleaner way to do it. I also don't like this name, I prefer files. Okay, it's up to you and, and you can change this later on. Okay, then sanitize spaces in resource names. I like this too because I found out that depending on the character, the number of spaces in between the words, uh, some of the links and the notes broke. So I'm gonna sanitize them using uh, the underscore symbol. Then we'll get to the tags. I don't want the hashtag in front of the tag name, so no here. Obsidian doesn't allow spaces in between tag names like Evernote. For example, New York, you, ha you have to have something connecting the two words. It can be New York all one word or you can add for example another underscore I'm changing this to create the connection in between the words okay that's it let's move to the next step this is a very important part of the translation of the note this is a template and we have here information about the front matter and also the note itself I'm not using this, so I'm going to delete here and I'll show you what I came up with after a lot of testing. If you want to use the same thing I'm using, you'll find a link to it in the description below. And you'll also find a link to a page on the developer's website explaining what uh, items you can use to build this template. So like I explained to you before, this is the front matter. Everything here will be metadata. And what I'm doing here is adding the title block, ending the title block. This is from the developer's website. And inside here, I'm explaining what I want it to be. I want the word title and the title itself. The same here, the creation date I'm calling created. And after that, I'm adding the creation date. GPS is the location and I'm adding the coordinates here and tags are tags. This is the end of the front matter. Below here is content of the node. So this is the content block, content and content block. And below here, I'm adding a line. And below that line, there is the source. Some of my nodes have uh, a link to another page. So this is what I'm adding here. So. This is the source block. I want the word source and here is a clickable link pointing to that URL that I have inside the node in Evernote. Again, all this is explained on the developer's page. I'm going to save this because I may need to use it again and then next. Finally, we have to select an export folder and next. Now all you have to do is click here, start conversion. This was pretty fast because it's just three nodes, but depending on the number of nodes you have, it's going to take a while. So go down here and make sure you see this message, conversion finished. Okay, this is just the Evernote original file. It has nothing to do with the conversion. I just save it here. This is actually what we are looking for, notes. If we open this, we can see our files. For example, this is that image that was inside one of the notes. And here are the notes. And now all we have to do is move them to the Obsidian Vault. If you don't know what that is, check this other video to understand how Obsidian works, okay? So let's call this... Evernote to Obsidian and let's move it here and here it is in Obsidian. All we have to do is click here and we can see the files 
and a node. So let's test what we just converted. Okay, the formatting looks good. Let's change this to reading mode. There is audio. Yeah, you have to trust me, it's working. <laughs> we have a task and let's try this here. Okay, this is a problem. This is why you have to test your notes. What happened here is that I created this link using a phrase on that note. The phrase was linked notes. And that link was created using linkednotes.md. There is no note with that title. If this link was the note title, it would have worked, okay? So that's why you, you have to test it. Try some variations and test it. Unfortunately, I don't know what to do to prevent this from happening. I don't have many links like this, but when I find one, uh, all I do is I remove this and I can add the correct one here, for example, Obsidian logo. And now we can go to that note. But let's use this note as an example to check the front matter. Let's go to the editing mode. And here you can see I have the title of the note. It's the same as this one. I have the creation date and the company logo tag. If you're not familiar with Obsidian, you may be asking why I have the title here and the title here and the creation date, the tag and other options that I choose to have here. Well, this front matter can also be used to create databases and that's why I think it's important to have a lot of information here. And talking about databases, let's take a look at the order of the nodes in both. As you can see here, uh, we have formatting symbols and Obsidian logo, but on Obsidian we have formatting, Obsidian logo and symbols. It's because this Obsidian account is set to order the nodes in alphabetic order, but we can change this and make it by creation date, uh, new to old, and now we have the same order as we had in Evernote. And this, in my opinion, is a very important feature of, let's try it, y'all, y'all. <laughs> I loved that it converted the notes preserving the creation date. Am I switching to Obsidian? Not for now, but I decided to follow my own advice and make a copy of my memories there. And to be honest, I'm having a lot of fun. Watch this other video if you want to learn how to make a backup of your Google Photos or if you want to move them to Apple Photos. And if you learned something useful today, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you soon.